Hey guys, welcome back to another video. The video that I'm going to be doing today is something that I've thoroughly enjoyed watching on other people's channels and that is my designer bag collection. So I'm going to try and do all of these bags in as chronological order as possible. I don't even know if this is my complete collection actually because a lot of stuff I've got from like way back when. I love seeing these kinds of videos and if you do too, I hope you enjoy this one. Let's get into it. So the first item I'm showing you is something that you may have already seen before in my Chanel collection video and it's the bag that I suppose started all of this off. It is this vintage Chanel. This is probably like 30 years old in a logo design that I never even knew existed. It's spacious and roomy inside. It's just one big space in the middle and pocket down the side. It is absolutely amazing. I'm usually not too delicate with my bags and this has withstood everything. The next bag I'm going to show you is this Moschino tote bag in this beautiful design here of like, I don't even know what this building is. Is this in Milan? Maybe. It just fits absolutely everything in it. It fits like a 15 inch laptop if you need it to and it's got this magnetic closure here so it's super easy to get in and out of and rather secure. I'm usually like a zip all the way person but this one is super secure and it's got a zip compartment in the middle. I think it's like this sort of fabric canvasy material on the front. It's rather durable though. I think if you did spill something quite dark on it, you would probably be able to see it, but so far so good. The bottom I think is leather and it has the Moschino written on the bottom. Love Moschino. This I've had for many years now and there's only a slight wear in the corners as expected with most bags, but very, very durable and one of my old favorites. Next one I'm going to be showing you is something that I bought in Paris and I got this really nice black tote bag from Pronto, which is like a massive department store, I suppose similar to Harrods. I think it's their actual own brand. Again, like the Moschino bag, it doesn't have a zip closure. It just has this sort of metal flap here. It's not magnetic or anything, but I still find it pretty secure because the straps are so close that you wouldn't be able to get in there anyway, just the shape of it. It's got a massive zip pocket here, same sort of setup that the Moschino one, and then a zip here. It's very, very durable. It's really scratch resistant actually for something that is so matte and it feels smooth and soft. It's got some feet at the bottom here, so it just stands up all on its own. And it is a little bit heavy actually, which is surprising given that the Moschino one is actually rather light despite its size. But really like this one and it's really nostalgic to me. So that's this bag. And you can see over time that I've been working my way up the designer ladder, so to speak, because the next bag is my first proper design purchase and I've got to really puff this one up. And it's this Vivian Westwood, I don't know what it's called, Anglomania bag. And I got this from Mr. Village actually a few years ago. It wasn't a very expensive one, it was maybe like £200. It's very, very big, it's like a bowling bag. You could fit a lot of stuff in there. It's obviously a little bit weird in terms of shape, but like it's kind of small opening at the top and then you've got to manage to wiggle your laptop or whatever in at the bottom, but it's not too much of an obstacle. It's got loads of pockets here as well. And it's got these feet at the bottom here. Very, very durable for some, a bag that is not leather. And it's so funny, whenever I used to see a scuff on it, because it's a bright red, it's the same bright red as a Sharpie. So I just used to go over it with a red Sharpie and you actually can't even tell. And I probably should wear this out a little bit more often, but it's so bold right now. My style's are a lot more understated than this, but every now and then I might just bring this out because it is a really good bag. So next bag that I'm gonna show you is actually a bag that I forgot to include and only just realized this. So this bag is a Ralph Lauren tote in this lovely tan camel shade. It's the only bag that I have that's in this shade. It was a bag that I had also gotten from Bista Village two years ago maybe. From memory, it was rather inexpensive. I'd say it was around 150 pounds. It fits so much stuff inside. It's around the same size as the Moschino one and and this one also has a zip so it's really safe and secure. There are a ton of pockets inside so that you can keep your belongings organized and it's very comfortable to wear over the shoulder or even just crook of the arm top handle and the bag is really excellent in terms of workmanship too. I have a little story that is a testament to the great workmanship of the bag and this was where I was at a hair salon and they gave me two pots of dye which at the time I really should have thought more about that before just putting it into my bag. 
but you can guess what had happened afterwards. And I just reached for the bleach as a last resort. It got pretty much everything out. There's only a slight bit of discoloration in some parts. It didn't harm the lining. It's still the same color. So I'm very, very happy with this purchase, but we will continue with my bag collection. So next bag that I'm gonna show you is also a little bit out there. It is this really cool Lulu Guinness bag. I currently have it stuffed at the moment. She is well known for having these sort of storefront designs on her bags and I love how it just embodies all of London which wasn't like a touristy I heart London. I liked also that it wasn't completely crazy colours or anything. The design is mainly on the front and the back has a really cute bulldog with a post box. And these cab here has movable wheels, so I just love the details on this. And Lily Guinness isn't really too expensive on the scale of like designer items. It's quite affordable, but I think it was even more affordable given that it was on sale. And I've had lots of really nice comments about this bag. I get stopped in the street a lot when I wear this. And I make an effort to try and continue to wear this because it's so nostalgic of London and I love the style. It goes well with anything actually. I just think it's a really nice top handle bag to carry or quick of the arm bags. On the shoulder it's a little bit more difficult, it sort of does just like slide off. If you want to hold it like that you can but I find it a little bit uncomfortable so I most enjoy wearing it on the crook of my arm or just as a top handle bag because I think it's just so sweet and it can actually fit quite a lot of stuff inside as well. So it's got a zip pocket here and then this old nostalgic small phone pouch. It's an open top bag again, but I don't mind it too much. It's quite structured, quite rigid, and if you are holding it like this, or quite close to your body, I don't think it'll be too much of a problem. And it's just so pretty, I love it. Those, I suppose, made up more of the lower end designer collection that I have. My first real venture into like mid-tier designer territory was the Chloe Faye bag with this snake skin or mock croc style leather in this deep burgundy. I haven't seen this colour ever since I bought this online. I bought it from Farfetch maybe two or three years ago and I remember when the Faye was literally all over Instagram. It was £1,100. I think it was slightly discounted as well, which for this sort of texture is really, really good. And I think nowadays it's probably like 1400 or something. And I wanted my first really expensive dent in my wallet to have a lot of function out of it rather than just aesthetics or just the hype. So this one I got because of like how spacious it is. You can see here how many, like it's like an accordion style. And when you open it, there's loads and loads of different compartments. And because the leather is quite soft and malleable, the inside can adopt any sort of shape. So even if your items are all at the bottom and quite bulky, as long as the top fastens because of this sort of narrow top, it will still close. Though it can get heavier quite easily because of just the one strap. I also quite like how these are removable. So if you did want it as a clutch, you can do. And the strap is also adjustable. But this is one of the bags that I wasn't sure whether to keep or not because I don't really wear this sort of colour palette anymore and I think I'll just give it another trial period because it is a beautiful bag and I really like the fact that all of it is leather and not suede like the other versions of the bag. But those bags I think don't do very well in like the rain or just getting scuffs on it. This is just really carefree and white clean and because of the nature of the textured leather it just means that any scuffs that do appear sort of blend in if that makes sense. But yeah, really really beautiful piece. The next bag that I got was the Givenchy Antigona bag, which again was one of those bags that just could not stop appearing anywhere, and still does, so that's a good sign. I think it might come off as beige on camera, but it's a really, really soft blush beigey pink, and it's in this patent leather in the small size, which honestly, for a small size, it is not so small. This is a bag that I saw being worn on a couple of people online, just randomly scrolling through. And obviously with me, I always have to look for an item that's sold out or is just discontinued. This was like a season old when I wanted to have it and I contacted those personal shoppers. I tried everywhere and I couldn't find it. So then I decided for some reason to call Bista Village and they turned out to have this bag and I literally rushed down the next day, not kidding, and the purchase was done within 10 minutes. I got this in Bista for about 900 pounds, 
which for this bag, which I think is going for at least £300 more for retail, is pretty darn good. This one I knew that I wanted, it was in the perfect colourway, I love that it could fit a lot of stuff. I have a cute little ducky on here at the moment. I love the style of it as a top handle bag, crook of the arm style, and it does have an arm strap, which I personally don't think is really that long. The bag handles awkwardly fit under my arm, it just about does it. I think they're making them detachable these days and also potentially adjustable. It's a very heavy bag though, I will say, and the opening doesn't pull apart too much. So it's one of those things where you have to sort of jiggle things in. Otherwise, it's a very, very spacious bag and it's very carefree because all the marks just wipe off it. I've heard some of these versions start changing colour in the rain, which is really crazy actually. If this one doesn't, it's absolutely perfect. I highly recommend getting like this sort of pattern or shiny version and I'm very, very happy with that. Next bag I have for you is this really cool MCM Stark backpack in small. It's quite a generous size for a small but I really like that, it fits a lot of stuff in it. This is the, I guess, iconic bag in black. I love the details, the monogram print on it, the stud details. It's very roomy inside, there's lots of pockets and compartments. It is a really nice, soft leather, but very, very durable and quite malleable. It folds really flat as well, and rather inexpensive on the scale of like designer backpacks. So this is the first designer backpack that I have. I think it's really worth investing in a good quality backpack because I just use this for absolutely anything. Next bag I've got is this bag which I suppose is like my holy grail bag and it is the Chanel New Medium Boy Bag in this patent black leather and this sort of champagne hardware. So I was able to get this a year and a half ago. It was a big achievement for me and I'm really glad that I managed to get it last year because given the rate of Chanel price increases at the moment, it's really not worth it to get this full price. Since I bought it this year, it's gone to like a thousand pounds more, I think for this size, because it's quite a big size. It's like the size of the jumbo, I believe. I bought this for around 2,700 and I bought this from Heathrow actually, so I made a huge saving. Originally, I wasn't actually gonna go for this one. I was prepared to get the old medium in the Ruthenium hardware, and it was in, the, I think it was in Lambskin, which to this day, I don't know what possessed me to get that. Then I asked to look at the other bags, which you should always do. They just opened the one of the panels at the back of the room and this was presented to me. And as soon as I saw this, I knew it was the right choice. And it was only like 200 pounds price difference. And for patent leather, it's just an absolute win because I know it's got this shiny vibe to it, which not a lot of people like, but for me, I wanted durability and I just wanted to be more carefree with it. I think I've shown it in a previous video. It's quite simple on the inside. And this is just my classic bag. It just goes with absolutely everything. And I am a little bit of a tomboy sometimes, so I do appreciate this boyish take on a classic bag. This is like my home brand. I don't think I can really go much further up from here, nor do I want to with the price of stuff at the moment. The next bag that I have is in this little box. And you might not be able to read what's in the box, but it says Alexander McQueen. So it's this very small Alexander McQueen Python effect clutch in this gorgeous silver colour and it's very small. I feel like we've just gone from big bags to way small. This barely fits my iPhone and this is just a normal size iPhone. If I do it slanted it fits my iPhone just about but the day I decide to get a bigger phone is going to be a problem. I got this actually on sale on Alexander McQueen's website a year and a half ago and I really needed an evening bag for a ball that I was going to and this was inexpensive compared to other clutches and especially for Alexander McQueen as well their clutches can go ridiculous like two grand and upwards but I thought this was one of the more functional ones and this was around 800 pounds which is a lot of money still but at the time it was I think retailing previously for like 1,400 so I just thought it was worth the expense and I can use this for other formal occasions and I don't really like clutch bags but I just like holding like this because I always I'm a clutch I will drop it so this fact that it'll be conjoined to my fingers is going to be really handy. It's quite simple inside obviously there are no pockets or anything it just about fits the bare essentials. I don't even know if I could fit a wallet and a phone at the same time. Oh I can so that's good you can get home and call your friends. I'm still undecided as to whether to sell this or not. I have been contemplating it. 
but it's just really really stunning i don't think you can even get stuff like this especially for that price that i paid for and it's really elegant i love the detailing on the knuckles here it can also be a weapon you know <laughs> and i've treated this quite carefully so none of the gems or anything have fallen out i don't know if they're like screwed in or anything but oh i see a, i think i see some screws here i love the print on it and silver is my hardware of choice obviously so this made for a very welcome addition to my wardrobe. Next bag in the collection is my Marina Herman Santa Hello Kitty backpack and this gorgeous pastel combination. I've talked about this bag before, but I got this one custom made. I had this color of strap instead of a hot pink as with the bow. So I think the whole process maybe took like two or three months, but the delivery time from the actual creation of the bag was rather quick. All the custom bits were like 900 pounds or something. I mean, we do have a couple of design flaws. There are scuffs, knife marks and discolorations. Some of the buckles don't really undo that easily without some brute force into it, but minor bits there that you wouldn't be able to see on camera unless I really zoomed in. It fits a lot of stuff. I have used this actually. I didn't want to just make this a display bag. It's quite a lot of room inside. I wore this to the Hello Kitty Cafe on holiday and all the kids were staring. I got a lot of compliments on this and it's not too out there in terms of Hello Kitty, but because it is quite delicate in terms of the leather, there is a little bit of color transfer on the back where I have previously worn that denim. So far it's all wiped off. Nevertheless, I love it a lot. Next bag to talk about is this Prada Kahir Velvet Astrology bag with this really cool brushed or antique gold hardware. I think it goes really, really well with the astrology theme. It's a bag that I don't even think they are creating anymore or has sold out. I don't know if it was part of their classic range, but I know the Kahir is quite popular at the moment. I first and foremost love the star detailing on the bag. I also love the velvet on it. This is the first velvet bag that I have. And I absolutely love the book style fastening. It's quite simple on the inside, which I appreciate given it is such a small bag. And I got this actually in Harrods. And this I think was like £1,500 and it had sold out ever since. So it was a very, very popular bag, very unique. It just goes with everything because it's black and it's very classic color. And it started, I suppose, my obsession with crossbody bags very very functional very convenient now we are on the second to last bag oh my gosh it's really flat and deflated and sad looking it's this Louis Vuitton Keeple Bandoulier in monogram clips size 45 it is a bag that I use for traveling right now and it matches so well with my monogram MCM backpack as well. I think they look so cool. I wanted one of these for a very long time and I haven't got anything Louis Vuitton in my bag collection so I wanted to dabble in there because I love the durability of the canvas. I have the key holder in canvas and I love how scratch resistant and carefree it is. And I got it from the airport. I managed to get this I think for like 20% off. I think I got it for like 900 pounds or 945 pounds and it was so worth it. I did a lot of research on the key pulls. I even looked at the speedies. The speedies were too small for my lifestyle though and it would probably be comparable size to some of the tote bags that I currently already have. So I wanted something a little bit bigger that I could use for cabin luggage. It fits perfectly and you can wear it in so many different ways. In the crook of your arm, hand held, over your shoulder and then you know, across body. It does get heavy depending on what you're packing in it, but because of all the different ways to wear it, I don't mind so much. It's usually on a little trolley or something that I'm pushing along anyway. I think it's a really, really stylish edition. Perfect for a weekend getaway. There's a lot of bag for your money. It comes with like the luggage tag, this buckle here for extra security, and it comes with a little lock that you can lock the side in. And it's in a very understated LV print, which I really appreciate. I'm not really a fan of like the in-your-face monogram print. So this one's a little bit more of an understated luxury that I have. It's a very good item to have in my collection. Finally, we have my most recent purchase, and that is the Chanel Mini in this really gorgeous iridescent pink in this distressed finish. And again, I have a charm on it because I'm absolutely obsessed. I've just got all my bags charms. It's a bag that I've been looking for for a very long time. I'm really into my pinks at the moment and it's not too pink in your face. As you can see, I've got pink around me. It's not that pink at all. Also, it can conceal any scuffs and stuff because of the nature of the leather as the same with my Chloe bag. I got this also at the airport. I seem to have a theme. I bought this because I knew there was a price increase coming and they will keep coming. This bag, I think, is now probably going for like two and a half grand, 
whereas I bought it for 1,900, which is still a hell of a lot of money, but compared to the price increases of the classic range, it was something that I was very willing to pay. But yeah, very simple bag inside, kind of like the boy bag, single flap as well, in this lovely silk hardware, and a very practical crossbody bag. You can also wear it in many different other ways. I have talked about the many different ways in my Chanel video, so I will link that below. So that is everything from my collection. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think of them, what was your favourite, and I'll see you in my next one.